This is a summary of the first season of Bubby and Carrie, The Next Generation. In the year 2060, one of Deborah Belmont's sisters, Cassie, went looking for her. By this time, Deborah had become the district attorney of the town in East Texas. Cassie told Deborah of her being divorced and having no children of her own, so she wanted to make Deborah's triplets the heirs to Cassie's estate. But that meant Deborah herself telling the triplets the truth about their origins. The triplets included Sammy and Susan Belmont and all of them were happy to connect with their aunt Cassie and accepted the news of who actually gave birth to them quite well. Meanwhile, in Houston, James Smith Bentley, Richard Sims and Diana Hudson had completed the ship they would use for exploration, including time travel. The ship was named the USS Sandy, after James and Debbie's mother. The crew members of the ship would include James, his sister Debbie, Debbie's wife Carrie, their son Richard, Richard's wife Diana, Janet Wilson, and the robot that James had built when he was in high school. So in May of 2060, the ship was launched and went on its first trip, not in space, but in time. 100,000 years in the past. But Richard would later report to his uncle that the long time trip burned out the time travel device, stranding the ship in the past until it could be repaired. James, Debbie, and Carrie then go out to explore the area the ship landed at only for them to be attacked by a family of cave dwellers, who capture James and Carrie and take them back to their cave. The leader of the cave people identifies himself as Grilock and demands to know why James and the others have come to their territory. James explains that they are stranded here and asks Grilock for help to learn how to survive in this place and time. Later, Richard is able to prove how powerful he is compared to Grilock and his people by using a gun to shoot down a mammoth, giving everyone a huge supply of meat. Gerlach is impressed. Gerlach's family includes his mate Pelabong, their 15-year-old daughter Jen, and their 13-year-old son Mac. After a week, the ship's time travel device is repaired, but it can only travel 1,000 years at a time. Just as the crew of the USS Sandy are about to leave, Gerlach asks James to take his children, Jen and Mac, back to the future so they can have a better life. James agrees to this. Despite their primitive origins, Jen and Mac are quick to grasp the concept of time travel and recognize that by the native time of the crew of the USS Sandy, Gerlach and Pelabong have died, so they perform a death ritual to honor their memory. There was a practical reason why Gerlach wanted Jen and Mac sent away. Pelabong was pregnant and the cave they lived in did not have enough room for five people, so now they can raise their next child without worrying about the other two. Richard eventually proposes a solution to overcome the limitations of the time travel device. By attaching a radiator to it, it will no longer be in danger of overheating and so longer time trips will be possible. Meanwhile, Jen tells Janet that she is a lesbian, and learns from Janet about Bubby and Carrie also having a lesbian relationship. Once Richard builds the radiator and attaches it to the time travel device, the USS Sandy is able to go all the way back to the year 2060 with no further problems. Meanwhile, Diana gives Jen and Mac new clothes to replace the skins they wore as cave dwellers. Once the ship arrives at the year 2060, James is reunited with his wife Penny Bentley Smith, who is the current owner of the Tuscany Tavern. And Jen and Mac have to be taught how to use all sorts of items they never knew of before including toilets. In Los Angeles, Laura Park is now a widow, having lost both her mother Jennifer Park and her wife Suzanne Hudson in the same year. But her daughter Mary Park Hudson is still alive, and a comfort to her mother. Mary wants to start a family of her own, but can't find a man to settle down with, so she consults her best friend Beryl, who refers her to Beryl's brother Todd. Todd agrees to be a sperm donor in exchange for some money, but then tells Beryl that he'd be happy to be Mary's boyfriend. Matt Lazinski, the mayor of the town Debbie and Carrie used to live in, invites them to attend a special ceremony in the town to honor Sandy Smith, Debbie's mother who died four years earlier. Debbie and Carrie agreed to go, despite Debbie remembering the bitter end of their friendship with Kelly Grimm many years earlier due to the conflict between Debbie and Lazinski, Kelly's husband. The mayor then announces that he commissioned a painting of Sandy Smith to hang permanently in the town hall as a reminder of Sandy's great achievements when she was the town's mayor. The painting was actually made by Carrie Sims at your mayor Lasinski and Kelly Grimm offered her $10,000 for it. As a result, 
Debbie and Kelly reconcile once Kelly apologizes for the hurtful things she once said about Debbie on social media. As a sign of that reconciliation, Debbie takes Kelly to Tulsa to visit Sandy's grave, since Kelly didn't attend Sandy's funeral. Richard, Diana, James and Debbie later discuss taking another time trip, to the year 1990, when Sandy Smith was a teenager. Jen and Mac are also brought along for the trip. Jen is about the same age that Sandy was in 1990, so once the USS Sandy travels back in time to that year, Debbie dispatches Jen to meet and befriend Sandy. Sandy is actually working as a waitress at a seafood restaurant in Oklahoma City, the Pink Octopus, which is owned by Sandy's father, Isaiah Green. He agrees to hire Jen, who poses as a homeless orphan, to work for the restaurant in exchange for food. The day after Jen is accepted at the restaurant, he brings her brother Mac and he also begins working there. Sandy then invites Jen and Mac to visit her at her home, only for them to be rejected and kicked out of the house by Sandy's mother, Karen Green. Much to Sandy's own shock and disappointment, Jen and Mac then report how they were treated to Debbie and James. Karen scolds her husband for being willing to hire homeless kids to work at his place. While Sandy has to deal with her former high school rival Jennifer Callie, who in the future will be the mother of Diana and Denise Callie. The next day, Jennifer Callie shows up at the Pink Octopus. Sandy refuses to serve her and sends Jen to do it instead. Jen finds Jennifer Callie's attitude to be just as offensive as Karen Green's was. Later, Sandy and Jen have a talk about religion in which Jen says she knows nothing about Jesus, so Sandy offers to teach her lessons from the Bible. Debbie tells Jen about a disturbing story in the Bible that depicts an act of genocide, Numbers chapter 31. The next day, Jen shares that story with Sandy, who is shocked and she begins to wonder what other horrible things may be in the Bible that she was never told about before. Jen and Mac return to the USS Sandy and then the ship returns to the year 2060. Upon returning home, the crew of the USS Sandy are saddened to learn from Carrie that Lucy Sims has died. So Jessica is now a widow and soon she is removed from the nursing home she shared with Lucy and then sent to the Smith Wilson mansion to live with her daughter Vicky. After Lucy's funeral, James and Penny tell Jen and Mac that they will be adopted into the Smith family. To help Jessica adjust to life without Lucy, Vicky suggests she begin working again at the Tuscany Tavern. The director of NASA meets one day with James to discuss the possibility of his selling the USS Sandy to NASA. But this proposal is rejected. Meanwhile, Steve Miller has died and his will splits his fortune between his son Sean, Debbie, and James. Debbie and James use their inheritance to resupply their ship for the purpose of making a trip to another planet. This time, Penny joins the crew as the ship's cook. And soon the USS Sandy launches from Earth on a course for the planet Mars. They arrive at the planet. And then Richard and Diana teleport down to the surface of Mars to take pictures and gather soil samples. The President of the United States sends the crew a message congratulating them for their achievement. But soon afterwards, they receive a threatening message from an alien race, the Sabari. Its leader, Commander Otto, says he will claim Mars as a colony for his people and demands that the USS Sandy leave the area. Realizing they are totally outmatched, James orders his ship to return to Earth. So James reports this to the President of the United States, who says the alien threat is his problem and would be dealt with soon enough. And so ends the first season of Bubby and Carrie, The Next Generation.